Asus Padphone Infinity, expected second quarter 2013. The quirky Asus Padphone 2 only hit the market a couple of months ago, but Asus have already come up with an improved version called the Asus Padphone Infinity. What they intend to call the next version we don't know, because of course Infinity Plus One does not exist. Anyway, at first glance the Padphone Infinity and the Padphone Infinity Station dock look almost identical to the Padphone 2 and its station, but even though there are a few differences they are pretty significant. The biggest change between the Padphone Infinity and the Padphone 2 is the display. The Infinity has a 5 inch 1080 by 1920 pixel Full HD Super IPS panel where the older one had a more modest 4.7 inch 720 by 1280 pixel screen. This graphics boost translates to the Padphone Infinity Station which is now a 10.1 inch 1920 by 1200 pixel unit and this makes more sense than the old 1200 by 800 pixel panel. The Padphone Infinity and Padphone Infinity Station are now fully HD compatible and the Padphone can output to an HDMI TV via an adapter. This is an Android 4.2 device with some of Astus's own applications on top including SuperNote for note taking, Story for creating photo albums and a voice control application called Astus Echo. Of course this is all very clever but you might be wondering why you should want such a thing. But the answer is that it keeps synchronizing data and settings between your smartphone and tablet simple because the tablet is the smartphone. But all this convenience comes at a cost, 999 euro to be exact, and there are some other drawbacks which we'll get to later. Inside the Padvone Infinity is a 1.7 GHz quad-core Qualcomm Snapdragon 600 processor coupled with 2 GB of RAM and 32 or 64 GB of onboard flash storage. The Padphone Infinity comes with a hateful nano SIM slot though, so you won't be able to swap in a micro SIM from another smartphone. The Padphone has a large 2400 mAh battery and the Padphone station has a 5000 mAh cell of its own. The docking station can be used to recharge the smartphone component, so you should come away freshly juiced. There's a 13 megapixel camera on the back of the phone, which also works in the station, plus a 2 megapixel front facing one in the pad phone and a 1 megapixel one in the station. The pad phone Infinity is an LTE capable device which also supports HSPA plus and all the usual cellular standards. There is broad Wi-Fi support, Bluetooth 4.0 and NFC, and the Padphone Infinity also comes with GPS and GLONASS positioning, plus a whole bunch of sensors. The Padphone Infinity station has its own RF antennas, so it doesn't have to rely on the ones in the smartphone. Put together, the whole package weighs 671 grams, which is a little heavier than the iPad 4, but then the Asus has a larger display and is a bit less efficient because of the docking mechanism. The Padphone Infinity itself measures 144 by 73 by 8.9 millimeters and weighs 141 grams. The station measures 265 by 182 by 10.7 millimeters and weighs an additional 530 grams. This is all well and good, but at a shade under a thousand euros this is a pricey bit of kit. But there's a more significant issue. If you break or lose your pad phone or the station then you have to replace it with an identical one, as the pad phones and stations are not compatible across generations. So if either component is out of date then you potentially have a very expensive problem. If you're the sort of person who gets through smartphones on a regular basis then it's worth bearing this in mind. Asus say that the Padphone Infinity should be available in Taiwan in April, followed by selected other countries from second quarter 2013 onwards.